May the peace of God be with you. Good morning to all. I welcome all who are listening today. As you have heard, our church, Greenville United Methodist Church, has canceled worship services for the next two weeks. We believe it is the wisest decision for protecting the flock, loving our neighbor, and care for our city. My aim for next week is to have a video or live stream of worship service that has music and a sermon. Now, if you will, let us center our thoughts on God's love towards us as we begin our worship service. And now, gracious God, may your words uplift us. Let us hear words we need. In Christ we pray. Amen. I will be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. The Apostle Paul wrote, Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will Rogers once said, Common sense ain't common, but that is what we're trying to employ now. If you go to the grocery store and try to find sliced bread or toilet paper, you will readily see the effect that the coronavirus has had on the common sense of general public. In times of crisis, we need to turn to the Word of God for help. Psalm 121 reminds us, I lift my eyes unto the help from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And yet the question still remains in our hearts. Where is God in all this chaos? Where is God? Well, I'm convinced God is everywhere. God is with us. And there is no place where God is absent. God, though I believe, has been speaking to us through the scientists for many years, warning warning us and telling us to be prepared like good scouts we should be. It was not if the pandemic would happen, but when it would happen. It is now happening. Scientists and epidemiologists are God's agents speaking to us. They are trying to understand the world that God has created, and they're still trying to figure this out in other diseases. But until they find a cure, we need to cancel everything. Now, this is aimed at one go, slowing down the spread of the virus to avoid overburdening a healthcare system that doesn't have the infrastructure to handle a sudden surge of tens of thousands of cases at once. Without mass closing, that surge is likely to happen, just as it has in Italy. Basically, if you assume a certain number of cases are inevitably going to occur, which epidemiologists can somewhat predict based on how the disease is behaving, continued business as usual allows cases to escalate rapidly in just a few weeks spiking so high at once that they completely overwhelm hospitals. In such a scenario such as Italy is now facing, more deaths are likely because they simply aren't enough hospital beds, enough face masks, enough IV bags, even enough healthy doctors and nurses to care for everyone at once. But the same number of cases can be stretched out over months, never quite exceeding the health care system's capacity, then people will get the care they need. More health care providers can avoid loss, illness, and a burnout, and fewer people are likely to die as South Korea has impressively shown. Closing and canceling is a good start, but to be effective, you and I need to do our part by avoiding as much as possible any crowds plus where large numbers of people congregate such as movie theaters, malls, worship services, and events that haven't yet been canceled. We need to follow the phrase social distances. It is a phrase that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have used to refer to the conscious effort to reduce close contact between people and hopefully stymie the transmission of this virus. The last thing that any of us want is for this virus to spread unknowingly to a susceptible individual during the act of corporate worship or church event or mass gathering. You see, I believe strongly God is speaking. He's shouting to us through public health officials. Trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your paths. God is still speaking and trying to direct us as this proverb has spoken. Therefore, resist panic. That is not to say that there is no reason to be concerned, but panic and fear are not from God. Calm and hope are. And each and every time that Jesus Christ came in the midst of disciples after having experienced the death of their Lord and Savior, they were scared literally to death, fearing for their own lives. And each time that Christ came among them, he said the powerful words, Do not be afraid. Seemingly, those words seemed to give them a sense of peace. You see, courage to face our greatest fears will not come from our self-confidence, but confidence in God's powerful promises to act on our behalf. God is with us. Secondly, we need to pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray when we feel like we're in the storm. No matter what swirls around us, God's promises us perfect peace. He assures us that he's working constantly, strengthening us and supporting us. So therefore, pray that God will keep you and keep your eyes focused up on him, not on the circumstances surrounding all of us. You know, pray when we're anxious about the future. When the future feels uncertain, when things seem to change, knowing God is always with you and will lead you every step of tomorrow. When you're afraid for the safety of your loved ones, I know one of the biggest fears that I have is that something bad will happen to one of my children. The reality is, I know I can't always be with them, nor can I always protect them from what may come their way. But I do know God is with them always. He is mighty. I continue to pray that God will wrap his everlasting arms around them and that he would keep them safe from harm. And then I know that God will take care of them. And lastly, as we face this pandemic, trust that God is with you. Many people, especially those who are sick, may feel a sense of isolation that compounds their fear. And many of us, even if we were not infected, will know people who are sick and may eventually die. So most of us will naturally begin to ask, why is this happening? Now, there's no satisfactory answer to the question which at its core is the question of why suffering exists, something theologians have pondered over the centuries. In the end, it is the greatest mysteries of all. At the same time, we know that Jesus understands our suffering and accompanies us in the most intimate of ways. When we remind ourselves of the public ministry of Jesus, he spent a great deal of time with those who are sick. He had compassion for them. He had empathy for them. Jesus knew of the world's illnesses and he comforted and he healed those through his touch and through his words. Now, I know Jesus understands all the fears and worries that you and I might have. He understands not only because he is divine, he understands all things because he is human and he experienced all things. I say again, go to him in prayer and trust that he hears you and know that he's with you. Here's what I do know. This pandemic shall pass. God is still in control. And this present, presents you and I as a church, as a Christian, to shine brightly. You can be a light in a time of crisis. Although many of us will be avoiding large events and maybe working from home, there are still opportunities to care for one another and demonstrate Christ's love. I would suggest a couple of ideas. Pray for those who are affected by the virus, those who are ill, the medical professional who are treating them, the scientists working on vaccines and cures, and the leaders making tough decisions to try to curb the spread of the virus and keep us safe. Pray for those with mental health concerns, as well as those who feel extremely lonely during this time. Please reach out to anyone you think might be feeling isolated over the next few weeks. Educate yourself about the coronavirus from credi credible and reliable sources, such as the World Health Organization, the CDC, and the Muhlenberg County Health Department. Know the symptoms and have a plan for what you would do if your family member were to become sick. 
Check on your friends and neighbors. If the virus spreads through our community as predicted, we continue, we need to continue to reach out and care for one another through phone calls, emails, and social media. As the virus spreads, many doctors and nurses will be working long hours. Consider ways you can bless these medical professionals with acts of kindness and notes of appreciation. In closing, I remind you again of the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote to the Philippian church. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now God has made us with the capacity to think, and sometimes our thinking leads us to anxiousness and fear. But God never intend for our thoughts to have more power in our lives and then his word. We may be faced with circumstances that appear to be frightening and overwhelming, but God wants us to have faith in his presence, in his touch, and in his word. Faith doesn't change the circumstances, but it does change our response. Faith or fear. Which will have the power in your life today? My faith will continue to rest in God and God alone. Now I'll keep you all in my prayers. May you keep one another, our community, and the world in yours. Let us pray. Gracious God, in times such as these, do give us a peace that surpasses all our understanding. Yes, may your peace guard our lives even as we face this pandemic and give us hope. God, may you continue to remind us that you are near, always near, now and forevermore. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen and amen.